Sergeant First Class Ben Wenzel from the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the basic parts of the cello. I'm going to start right up at the very top with the scroll. Some of my students think that the scroll looks like a curled up squirrel's tail. The scroll sits right on top of the peg box, which of course is where the pegs live. One, two, three, four. One for each string. Of course the strings are attached to the pegs. The strings are held up uh, uh, by a very small piece of wood here at the very bottom of the peg box called a nut. Very important job. That nut keeps the strings from rattling on the fingerboard, which is this long, thin, black piece of wood that runs the entire length of the instrument here. The strings go all the way down and are held up in the middle by the bridge, which looks like a strong person holding the strings up on their back. And the strings are attached to the tailpiece, specifically to the fine tuners, which you can see up close there. The tailpiece, in turn, is attached by the tail gut to the end pin. And that tail gut sits up on the saddle here, which is this black piece of wood down at the end of the instrument. And of course, at the very pointy end of the instrument is the end pin itself. Uh, keeping that uh, uh, fingerboard in place is the neck. If you were to imagine that the peg box was the head of the instrument and the round top of the body of the instrument were the shoulders, then it makes a lot of sense to see that piece as the neck. So the body of the instrument itself. The cello is basically a big fancy looking box of wood. Um, all of the pieces we've talked about so far uh, are sitting on top of the cello and if you were to set the, the cello on your knees it would be kind of like all of those pieces were sitting on a table um, just like if you were to put a plate, a cup, your dinner on, on your dinner table uh, and for that reason sometimes the top of the cello is called the table it's also frequently referred to as the top of the instrument likewise the back is referred to as the back most frequently. The sides of the cello have a couple of names that are interchangeable. Um, they're known as the ribs or the bouts. Now, this one is particularly noteworthy because it's in the shape of letter C. And following along with these very sensibly named other parts of the cello, this is called the C bout. There are a couple of really important pieces inside the cello that you can't really see, but it's important to know about because they help make that gorgeous sound uh, come out of the instrument. The first is on this side of the bridge. On the inside, there's a very small stick of wood, a dowel, that is just held in place by the tension of the strings on top of the cello. It connects the top, the table, to the back so that when a vibration starts in the strings, it's carried down through the bridge to the top of the instrument and gets that top vibrating. And those vibrations are taken then by the sound post, that stick of wood, to the back of the cello. The back is usually made out of a harder wood and helps to amplify and focus uh, uh, those vibrations, bouncing them all around the cello and then sending them out of the F holes into the audience's ears. The other part that is uh, noteworthy on the inside uh, is called the base bar. The base bar is a thin strip of wood that runs on the other side of the bridge on the inside and it's actually glued to the top on the inside and it helps do a very similar thing but just with regard to helping to focus the lowest notes, the bass notes on the cello. And speaking of those bass notes, uh, we have them on the C string down at the bottom, but let's just quickly go through all four of those open strings. You have the A, D, G, and then way down in the basement, the C. Those are the basic parts of the cello. Hope you have a good day and happy practicing.